In 2014, Sisters in Islam were declared a deviant organization. It was part of a fatwa by the Slango Islamic Affairs Council, aka Ma'is, which declared that any individual or organization promoting liberalism or religious pluralism were deviating from the teachings of Islam. And they name dropped Sisters in Islam specifically. This kicked off a legal battle that has lasted nearly a decade and continues to rage on. Want to know how it ends for sis? Stay on to the end of this video. A fatwa is a religious edict in Islam. In Malaysia, fatwas can be gazetted into Sharia law by each state's Islamic authorities and enforced on Muslims. They do not apply to non-Muslims. Let's take Slango for example. The power to issue fatwas lie with the fatwa committee, which comprises of the mufti, deputy mufti, state legal advisor, ma'is and other appointees. Once the committee has discussed and approved the fatwa, it then asks for the Sultan's assent to gazette it as part of the state's Sharia laws. The law is then binding on all Muslims in the state subject to personal observance exceptions allowed by Hukum Shara. It would only have a moral authority over the believer who asks from his teacher what he should do. Now, how is a fatwa different in Malaysia? If I defy or disobey a fatwa, that is a uh, Sharia criminal offence. The creation of fatwas can lead to backdoor legislation on criminal offences and it allows for the creation of such offences to bypass the state. So because a mufti can make a fatwa and legislative provisions that make defiance of a fatwa a criminal offence, that is how they bypass the state legislature in terms of the creation of new Islamic offences. Now, back to Sisters in Islam. SIS has been championing Muslim women's rights in Malaysia for decades, working on issues ranging from domestic violence to divorce. But when Ma'is issued the 2014 fatwa and singled SIS out, it essentially declared their advocacy work as haram. One of our colleagues at that time came across it. Fatwa that mentions our legal entity. We, I think, discovered it yeah, on the 19th or the 20th of um, October. And it just so happened that we were in a very small window of about 10 days to submit a judicial review. But in the meantime, uh, there were also actions, you know, writing to the religious authorities to ask why was this fatwa issued. It's getting harder to break into one, you know, the, the communities. With the public, is already very, um, what do you call this, uh, challenging because in Malaysia, there is this idea that the religious authorities know all. So when um, the fatwa was issued, you know, the public just do not question. Once upon a time, when you talk about women's rights and Islam, we are at the table, we are giving information, we are giving recommendations. But now, you know, people are just so scared to be seen with us. In a bid to quash the fatwa, SIS applied for a judicial review in October 2014. In 2016, the High Court ruled that it did not have the jurisdiction to hear the case. SIS brought the case to the Court of Appeal in 2017, which ruled that the case should be sent back to the High Court. Ma'is was unhappy about this and appealed to the Federal Court, which also ruled that the case should be sent back to the High Court. It would take four years before full hearings would begin. In 2019, the High Court ruled that civil courts have no jurisdiction to hear the judicial review application. SIS appealed again, but it was dismissed in 2023. The judge said that the civil court has no jurisdiction relating to hukum shara of Sharia law and that the fatwa issue is under the exclusive jurisdiction of the Sharia court. The feelings at that time were just like, I can't believe I'm hearing this. I can't believe I'm hearing this. One of the reasons why we challenged it is because they had named our legal entity, Assist Forum Malaysia. And the thing with laws and fatwas uh, pertaining to uh, Islam in Malaysia, in each of the state, is that you know these laws can only be applied to persons who profess the religion of Islam. Yes, the organisation is named Sisters in Islam, but as an entity, it cannot profess. The way we see it is that you know they just wanting to shut down our voices because they think the way we talk about Islam is wrong. But why should all of us care about what happens to sis? Well, the thing is, this case could have implications for every Muslim person in Selangor and possibly the whole country. Ma'is wrote in the fatwa that it helped the authority to ensure Muslims in the state will be directed to the right path if they were found to promote liberalism or religious pluralism. 
this reads more like a political kind of fatwa. It's to take a position rather than to establish a legal clarity over an Islamic issue. This one isn't a legal opinion. It doesn't say anything. Instead, it, what it seeks to do is to ban and to smear certain people. There's no explanation except a bunch of labels. So it's vague. When you come to law, which has to be enforceable, this is not good enough. And of course, the fatwa against cis is one of several controversial fatwas over the years. There have also been fatwas against yoga, ma yong, smoking, and even Pokemon Go. Religious authorities in Sabah and Penang have since issued fatwas against religious pluralism and liberalism as well. CIS Forum's challenge is simply this. Stay within the ambits of your legal authority and jurisdiction. Just because you're a religious organisation statutorily enacted does not mean you have absolute control over Islam in Malaysia. What they're trying to do is put one version of Islam and if you go against that, you can be prosecuted for it. It's unconstitutional in the sense that you are able to create criminal offences that have an impact on a Muslim's life and liberty without it being vetted, argued, debated in a lawmaking kind of environment. For CIS, the battle continues. In April 2023, they took their case to the federal court in a final effort to challenge the fatwa by posing 10 legal questions. Among them, whether a fatwa published in the Gazette under sections 48.6 of the Administration of the Religion of Islam, State of Selangor Enactment 2003, is a form of subsidiary law and or delegated legislation. And the other question is whether civil courts have jurisdiction to conduct a judicial review of the making of a fatwa or its publication in the Gazette. These two questions could have an impact on whether the fatwa against CIS is lawful and bring clarity to how all fatwa should be issued and ensure those procedures are done properly. It really is about, you know, this thing called power. So I think for a lot of people in public and even people in authority, I think perhaps they were uncomfortable with CIS speaking about Islam because they think that we do not have the authority to do so. At the end of the day, it's the people who still suffer because the understanding of the mainstream interpretation of Islam is going to become much more rigid and it's going to impinge on people on the ground with very, very limited access to justice. At the end of the day, it's oppression. We just do not know how to have a conversation with each other where we disagree.